Welcome back to the Blue Door Pub. Thunderdome for another bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. A show about everything and nothing coming at your ass five days a week. So walk, walk, wash your ass. Walk your ass. Uh, Sin Shotgun is Uncle Nick. Follow him on Twitter. And Nick's on. Hey, how's it going? Going good, Andy. How's it going? You want, you want a meat raffle? I want a meat raffle this week. Hey, yeah. we'll get into that in a sec. Uh, tell friends, spread the word, Arjun Stitcher, uh, radio, bullshow.co. Also, uh, follow me on the Instagram. It's going down. It's going down on Instagram. All the kids are on there. Uh, I, I'm, I recently delved into Snapchat. Apparently, well, you informed me that everyone can see when you screenshot stuff. Um, the person you screenshot can, yes. Well, that completely ruins all the fun for me. Well, now I- we have to get two phones. <laughs> Which is the way a lot of people get around uh, that. But I uh, hope you enjoyed your weekend. We're back at it on a Monday here. And uh, like I said, Nick and the meat raffle. Huzzah. Uh, it's great. It was the first time I ever participated in a meat raffle. I mean, kind of, you know, better late than never. I'm 32 right now, and this is my first meat raffle in Minnesota. Right. That's kind of surprising because I feel like a, a lot of bars go to thing is meat raffles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of the, you know, neighborhood bars, you know, a lot of the, you know, non non chain mm. places, you know, like the Olive Garden doesn't have a meat raffle, but local bars in the Twin Cities, a lot of, like the, the smaller ones, the hole in the wall type of bars, those are the ones that have the meat raffle. Usually sponsored by a, a local butcher shop or something. Um, you know, usually organized pretty well, and you get some pretty uh, pretty nice uh, cuts of meat there. And what'd you come away with? All right, I won twice, and I came away with uh, one pack of um, three sirloins, hey. which I brought, which I brought here. Yep. <laughs> and then I I won uh, two uh, T-bone steaks. Hey, date night. Yes. Yeah. Oh, are you gonna take them over to Megan's? Um, I was actually bringing my buddy. Uh, oh no, my my uncle. Uh, uh, my uncle Bill, who I who I might stay with uh, in my moving process. Yeah. Uh, Kind of a uh, that, that's how you grease it. Oh, usually, um, when you give someone the bone for w- when you want things, it's a different meaning. But you're, you're, this is literal. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But uh, it's a ton of fun if you ever done a meat raffle. It's very easy, and, uh, very inexpensive, and you know you uh, can it's win. really easy to give someone some money for a raffle ticket, and then they draw out the racket, and then if you if they match the numbers, you win. Is it that easy, Nick? It is that easy, Andy. All right. <laughs> so- uh, also, something that's easy is supporting a bunch of sexy ass Vikings gear. Go to stick co. Head over to the Minnesotatroth. dot com. T R O U G H. Uh, all of their merch, including our skull purple for the wind shirts, are knocked down. Uh, Fifteen bucks for the shirts. It's just in time for draft week. I run this promo all week, plus free U.S. shipping if you use the promo code Purple FTW over there. The Minnesota Troth dot com. Help our friends out and get yourself some sweet ass gear. Uh, I, I'm getting the a couple shirts and also the the snapback hat. Uh, I found that as I've gotten older, I've gotten out of fitted hats because remember growing up, fitted hats were the shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, I, I feel like my head fluctuates in size because I go between uh, a seven and a half, seven and three quarter, or something like that. And sometimes they're too tight; it's too loose. Uh, my head it waxes and wanes like the moon. <laughs> so that's why I'm all, I'm, waxes, I'm like all the about the, uh, the the snap back. And then you can find me on Snapchat. Ooh, there we go. Uh, again, the Minnesotatroth.com, fifteen bucks off for. A lot of our gear there, and plus promo code purple FTW for free U.S. shipping. Uh, so the weekend happened, and a lot of Prince celebrations. The Wild lost, got their ass swept out of the playoffs. Well, not swept, but you know what I mean. Uh, knocked out of the playoffs. And then the March for Science. Nick, how come you didn't march on the March for Science? Um, as we talked about on the show, I'm in a moving process. So a lot of my weekends, I'm uh, packing, cleaning uh, my bedroom. And when I have free time, uh, going... With family to check out um, possible condominiums where I could live. So I unfortunately, um, being from a science background, mm-hmm. being that my full time career is you know sadly not this job, but um, as a science analyst, uh, I was not able to participate in this march. Oh, well, that's kind of sad. W- where was it? Uh, so was this nationwide? Yes, yes, I believe it was happening in D.C. 
a lot of major cities. Um, obviously, in Minnesota, it was at the Capitol. And I think I saw a news article that um, Duluth was even having a, a march as well. Because when I think of science, I think of Duluth. <laughs> well, uh, you know, science, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm biased here. But I think science is very important and should be, you know, talked about. I mean, yeah. the... Obviously, this was the year of protesting, and I'd like to think that this march was, you know, not a a violent. This wasn't at all anything. Well, of course, violent, this one right? didn't get violent because they're all nerds. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hit you with my sign. Nice <laughs> one. Yeah. And also, look at this picture. It's it, it's got the meme of Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know, the whoa, we got a badass here, and. It says, the good thing about science is that it's true whether you believe it or not. Believe is spelled wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good job, science people. It's, oh, you spent too much time in the beaker with your Bunsen burners, and you didn't take a common grammar class and spelling. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good news. We're going to find the covalent bonds. Yeah. I, I, also, I, Bill Bill and I was at this thing, and it it, it sort of shattered my my childhood learning that Bill and I is actually he, he's a science enthusiast. Like he's not a scientist scientist. Is that true? I, and he's actually full, well. Apparently, he went to Cornell and he, he worked in aviation before going into TV. But yeah, he, he he doesn't have like a formal science background. And sure, I you don't necessarily need that in a lot of fields of study. Like I. I I'm not a uh, – well, I have an econ economics degree. That I've never used a day in my life, but I work in business. I work in, in radio and podcasting, and so I don't have a formal education there, but I'm pretty damn good at it. But I feel like science – science, you definitely need, like, the formal education. Wikipedia says he has a, uh, a Bachelor of Science degree in uh, mechanical engineering. Well, we're, ha- we're happy for him. That does not mean science. That's Just science. because it calls Bachelor of Science doesn't mean it's actual science. I have a degree in Bachelor of Science. It, the mechanical engineering is a science. No, it's not. It's not science. It's engineering. That's like the same thing. It's like building a building, e- engineering. That's not science. That's not protons and neutrons and chemical reactions and shit. That's uh, so building. I think sci- science can be a broad term, which which I think includes engineering. Well, then I'm, let, I'm gonna Google this. If, if everything's science, nothing science then. Ooh, yeah. that just blew my mind. Yeah, that's deep. But did you see him? I think he was on Tucker Carlson uh, debating about uh, global warming. I was like, I don't know, man. Also, how, how do you go around calling yourself the science guy? That was a piece like I, I, I get that it was it was a kid's thing, and then it just morphed into something different. Just like how Fast and the Furious, starting out as a street racing movie. Is now a and then movie. It morphed into <laughs> like submarine attacks. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure by Fast and Furious 12, it's going to be revealed that they all have superpowers, and it, it becomes the Avengers. And I would watch that movie. Someone who's actually didn't watch the Avengers movie yet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the Neil deGrasse Tyson though is an actual scientist. Like he actually has a formal training, and I, I think he's he teaches. I think at. Uh... And he's got a great personality. I really enjoy listening to him. But I don't know, like, this is mainly a global warming march. So this is thinly disguised as an anti-Trump march. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's the one thing I don't uh, care too much about it. Uh, you know, it's just, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm a strong believer of promoting sciences. I want people and you know, kids to, you know, you know, think about science, nature. Um, whatnot you know but it's uh we're in a tough political time now and all these marches are gonna kind of come out of hand and everything's gonna be pro this anti this right now mm-hmm. and that's uh it's a very scary message to send people um i just hope people you know who did participate in this stuff you know participated in for the for their love of sciences and not to be like oh this is my statement to be anti-trump because mm-hmm. you know we don't know the the politics, if Trump's going to try it, because a lot of people are worried that he's going to try slashing a bunch of science budgets and whatnot. So that's all I have. Uh, it, it, 
what what gets me is that science should not be political, except I feel like now more than ever, science is extremely political. Yes, yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, and also the uh, – I forget who put this out, but it, they made a really good point. Now, I'm my, – my stance on abortion is like whatever. It's – it, it's pro-choice under extreme uh, extenuating circumstances. Not getting any of that, whatever. Uh, but since this is March for Science, how come they're not talking about abortion and how the the zygote is actually a human being, like right away, as opposed to ha- having uh, abortion, third trimester abortions? I mean, come on, that's a human. I think uh, you gotta wait for the um, health march. I think I think that might fall into health march. Come on, Andy. Now, okay, well, uh, yeah, yeah, that is all. Uh, also, the Prince celebrations went down over the weekend. Uh, first half and seventh entry, good times. Yeah, it's um, and, and like any Prince celebration, uh, I don't have the timing up here, but I think they all went to at least four o'clock in the morning. I mean, as a lot of uh, when Prince was alive and his surprise concerts that he used to do, you know, every year. He, yeah, the, the, his parties would, like, start, like, at midnight, and he might come on on, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, but then, like, the party goes till 4 or 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. Like, you're leaving um, Paisley Park or First Ave, like, at 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they're insane, and, yeah, they're going on. They went on all weekend. Well, have you seen any of the footage at all? Uh, no. Because, all right, I, I, I feel like, is this going to happen every year? I think so. First tributes? No, oh, it'll yeah, be good. It's gonna be it's gonna be every year now. Yeah. The first half can actually get some business. They get business all the time, you know. They get um, everyone from from the current line. This might be just old man talking, but that that building smells like 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 urine. <laughs> when was the last time you were there? Uh, a couple years ago, handful. I, know, I I went with some of the Vikings bloggers. I went to a, a concert there after the game. Okay, uh, I went. I think three or four years ago, I saw a band there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's a musty smell. Yeah, it's a uh, older building. It's, it smells uh, like history, man. No, it smells like bo and millennials. <laughs> that should be a new cologne yeah. that they release: the millennials cologne. Uh, what's your favorite venue for a concert? Whether it be a arena, a club, or what? Um, a majority of the concerts I've been to have been arena style, um, have been uh, at the XL or Target Center. And mm-hmm. the XL, I think, has uh, they do really good with the concert format. I wish I, I've been meaning to do like kind of my bucket list or my thing to do something new every year is to go to the smaller venues, to go to First Ave, go to Varsity, um, the Medina, you know, smaller venues to see concerts, to see mm-hmm. if the. The venues uh, are much better. If you had pick one, and it can't be the Roy Wilkins Auditorium, I I really want to go to the Medina. The Medina, it's a small um, theater out uh, just west of the Twin Cities. Uh, apparently, a lot of bands kind of go through there. You know, the smaller bands. Yep. I, I would like to. That would be on on a somewhat of a bucket list is to see some band go through there. You know, like America, like uh, obviously, probably a lot of '70s or '80s bands would go through there. Probably no modern band would go there. Uh, Nickelback for one e- evening only. Poison. <laughs> the, the, the not Brett Michaels. <laughs> of <laughs> poison, like, like everyone else, <laughs> the former former Poison members, be performing there. Uh, what '80s band would you want to go see? Well, a big '80s band who's coming to the cities. I believe next in the next couple of weeks is Hollow Notes. Uh, them and Tears for Fears are, I believe, playing at XL, like on a Thursday or something. I I, I would love to see them. I'm a big Hollow Notes fan. Oh, well, that's exciting. Uh, we have a new segment debuting. Well, it, it, it's someone that's been omnipresent, but um, we, we've now formalized it. A little yeah or nah. Yeah, 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 real good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or no, no, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. no, 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 hell no, 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 no,
No! I refuse. No! No! I'm surprised you didn't get the uh, clip from uh, The Office when he goes, No! No! Oh, you, you mean the outro? <laughs> no! Oh. God! Sorry. <laughs> no! God! Please, no! No! Hey, have you ever seen the movie Cop Out? I don't know if I have. Bruce Willis, Tracy Morgan, Sean William Scott. I have not seen that, no. I, I, we're we're going to watch the trailer after this because I feel like I have to watch it because I, I, I think it's going to be a sneaky, funny movie. But anyways, uh, the mechanics of Ya yeah or Nah are pretty simple. I'm going to throw out a couple scenarios, and then uh, Nick and I will discuss if it, it, Yeah or Nah. That's how it goes. Uh, this one is going to be Parenting Edition because that's one near and dear to my heart. Ooh, the demo podcast. Check out every single Saturday. Nick and I talk parenting and whatnot. I can sit try our radio, uh, dadmodepod.com. Uh, so the first one. Actually, give, give me some of the music. What button is the music? Oh, there you go. All right, so the first one is going to be, yeah or nah, is it okay for a dad to wear a backwards hat? Is it okay for a dad to wear a backwards hat? Now, I'm talking about, like, regularly. Oh, nah. Sure? I'm sure about that. I'm going to go nah as well, but I feel like it is a it is a generational thing. Because you, you got 90s kids now that are having kids, and they're in the 30 and 35 years old, and they got the sleeve tattoos, and they're wearing the you know, the, the tank top. That has like the Hurley or the what are some of the other skater brands? Uh, <laughs> Don't look at that. Uh, look at me and ask. Uh, Hurley uh, Element. Ooh, that's one. Ooh, Element. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Basically, they look like PacSun circa 2000 and threw up all over them. That's what they look like. Tony Hawk. And, oh yeah, that's a good example. So I, I feel like it's being worked in, but it's still still odd to me, especially when. Uh, you got like a the forty year old dad wearing the backwards flat brimmed hat, and you know sitting across from his, his eighteen and twenty year old kids at a diner, just like sitting. You <laughs> say flat brim too? Oh. Yeah, flat brim. Oh my god! Yeah. No, that's no, no. Um, for me, what got me on their statement is I don't mind if people think it's a fun style to do the backwards hat thing, but if you're doing it regularly, as in like, oh, you know, I mean, like. Why do, why do we have hats? They have a brim on there that blocks out the sun. Putting it backwards all the time, like if you're wearing it all the time, no, it's, 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 not, it's not what it's meant for. I'm sorry. Uh, next up, yeah or nah, you can leave your kid in a locked, temperature-controlled car to get eggs and milk at the gas station. Yeah or nah. I'm gonna go yeah. I'm ah uh, gosh, I might go nah because I don't like leaving a child alone. But you can see it, or like if you're going in to pay for gas, if you didn't pay the pump for some reason, I'm able to lock the doors. Yeah, well, doors are locked. Air conditioning uh, is on if it's hot. Heat is on if it's cold. The kid's not gonna die and like tap out in in under a minute, because. I've experienced this too, and parents of young kids will know this for sure. It's like, especially when they're like really young, when you have to get them out of the car seat, you have to get them into a stroller, or you got to carry them, which is a pain in the ass. And all you need is a dozen eggs and a half gallon of milk. You're just like, I can do this. This will take one minute. Oh, huh. Okay, okay, yeah. If you can do it in a minute, yeah. that'll be fine. Because I'm not gonna lie, and don't call child protective services, but I, I've let. Mugsy in the house when she's napping to walk across the street and get the mail. I think that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Even though, what do you mean? You're leaving your property with your child asleep and alone in the house? We got two dogs. They're watching her. Surprisingly, I, 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 I will back in on this one. I think the dogs would rip the shit out of any burger who's trying to mess with Mugsy. Yeah. Those- those dogs are badass. Yeah, but leaving kids in the car, I feel like that gets a visceral reaction from people. It's because a lot of the storylines that you hear with kids being left in the car, it's mm. it's the left outside the strip club in the in like yeah, the freezing yeah, yeah. cold at night, mm. or like like left at in target, a hot car and then they, they just target check out. all day. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, I mean, I mean, then you 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 know, that's 
really horrifying. But. And then what, what do you think about the hero people who, like, smash the windows with a tire iron? It's like, I am saving this child. Dude, we, we've been gone for 30 seconds, and she was in air conditioning. And, and now, you, since you broke the window, now it's hot out. Good for you. You owe me 50 bucks for that window. 50. You owe me, like, 200. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, next up. All right, so both. Yeah. Perfectly fine on that. Next up. Being fall down drunk in front of your kids. We'll we'll say ten under. So you, you know you got the you got the family barbecue, have a couple of pops, maybe have a couple of swigs of Fireball, then uh, going up to eight year olds like, hey, today we're gonna teach you how to ride a bike. Dad, I've been riding a bike for four years. You can't be too careful. I've been around it enough where I, I, I feel fine <laughs> saying yeah because, it, you know, um, I've had relatives, uh, aunts and uncles, sorry, aunts and uncles, I mind you guys out on this one, but, you know, who, yeah, who've had a few drinks in front of the kids and been a little belligerent. Um, usually there's enough sober people around to kind of balance everything out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take it. I'm going to go yeah. Mm, this is close for me. Like, like you can definitely be, you know, have a couple of beers in front of your kids. That's perfectly fine. But being like fall down drunk, like mm, that one's a little far. That was a little rough. We watched Titus together, Andy. I, yeah. I, I, th I think we know. I think we know it should be a yeah. Because I, I, I know <laughs> that, like uh, growing up, uh, I, uh, I saw my dad a couple lit up a little bit, but it wasn't like three sheets to the wind. But, like, mm, uh I'm gonna go nah. I'm gonna go nah. I mean, in general, I mean, is it ever okay to see someone belligerently like 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 have to be thrown into like rehab drunk? I mean, no. But eh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm sticking with yeah. Kind of miss college. Uh, all right, so two more to go. Uh, yeah or nah? Uh, it's okay to be naked in front of your two year old. And, and now that this is a specific example from from my from my life. In front of anyone's two-year-old or your kids? Or your, kids? your kid. <laughs> okay, okay. Not just any two-year-old. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, they kind of... Um, yeah, I, I think it's fine. I go, yeah. They're, they're, they're not smart enough to kind of look... Yeah, uh, I'm going to go, nah. But you, we're hitting the borderline. Because I feel like one and, un, uh, one and under is definitely a fair game. Because they're, they're not going to remember anything. But o older, when they start pointing and, and saying stuff... Yeah, I, I I feel like that gets a little weird. I mean, are you per, are you personally getting naked in front of your kid to show him your body, or is it something? No, like, I, no you have to, you have to, like, this is not an exhibition thing. This is just like <laughs> getting out of the shower and then walking to the bedroom and getting changed. Except the kids in the bedroom. I'll go yeah, just because I I think too they're still kind of young to to get that um, you know, and, and because you know you're quickly changing, you know, mm. it's not something, you know, it, you know, it's not something. God, oh, I, so I forget which stand-up comedian had had it where it's like only let your kids see your penis once and make sure that they're young and can remember uh, it, form memories and then have a, have a little chub going on and then so the kids will for the rest of their lives always think my dad has the biggest penis in the world. I think it was Greg Fitzsimmons. That sounds like something Greg would say. Yeah, but it, it was good. Uh, either way. Uh, because we're hitting the borderline because Muggsy turns two here in a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go nah on them. Uh, last one, uh, one that I've experienced lately. Yeah or nah, okay to wash your kid's face with your own spit in public? <laughs> Sorry, I'm picturing this in my head. If you're in a pinch, I say yeah. I mean... You know, if you can't get to water anywhere, you know, if it's if it, if it's something like like a little smudge on their face, you know. I, oh, it, 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 I'm going, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I've noticed that Muggsy has just like sneaky get smudgedness. Like it, it, in the car when we're going to the gym or daycare or whatever. And all of a sudden it's like, how'd you get so dirty? We, we just wa wiped your face at home. And then. Because it's a reflection of you, or it's like, uh, blah, blah, blah. and then the kid struggles, and it's like, oh, 
Yeah, I, I was on the receiving end of this many and many a time. I, I know where you're coming from. And, and that's ya yeah or nah. Monkey, this is not nah. This is that is not ya yeah or nah. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So how'd you think it went? I thought it went fine. I'm surprised. We we uh we had a few opposites, Sandy. Yeah, because I, I don't want to just like whip it out in front of a two year old, Nick. I'm sorry. This is why that you have a red dot above your house. I don't have a red dot above my house. My house is fine. No, and what's it called? I and I asked right away. I'm like, are you purposely getting naked in front of the kid to be naked uh-huh. in front of the kid? No, uh-huh. like changing quickly uh-huh. is is fine. Uh-huh. Uh, also fine is the second half of the show. We'll be right back with more Boo with Ann Carlson on the Monday. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more Purple for the Win podcast with Andy Carlson. Come to you all off-season long, covering free agency, the draft, OTAs, and then we're on to training camp. Get the show on 1500 ESPN, Podcast One, and the Podcast One app. And come back into the Blue Door Pub Thunderdome. And, hey, you got gatherings coming up. You got graduations. You got summer get-togethers. You got the whole gamut. And catering is a pain in the ass. It's like, how much beef shoulder do we need? Do we need some more beef shoulder? Nah. Let Blue Door take care of all your catering needs. Weddings, corporate parties, festivals, everything. They, you can have your Blue Bar. You can do mini Blue You can do tachos, wings, apps, just like everything on their menu or custom made they're flexible the bdp.com slash catering hit them up the bdp.com slash catering blue door pup uh so we're coming back and uh, full disclosure as always we record this on a sunday and as soon as we're done recording this we're going to go have a little burrito challenge and i'm excited i can't wait it was, it was exciting uh a year ago we went to this restaurant and we saw these burritos um, the size of plates, you know, I'm much bigger than a Chipotle burrito. Now, all right, so let's give some love. Fiesta Cancun in uh, lovely Egan, Minnesota. This isn't like an official challenge. This isn't like a, hey, uh, you eat the whole thing and you get a T-shirt. No, this is, this is about pride. This is about you versus you when you're looking yourself in the mirror. Yeah, it's a pretty big mirror. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah um, burrito, an excellent staple of... Mexican food, or a.k.a. Mexican-American mm. food, because I don't know if they actually really do do burritos down in Mexico. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't. I, I think that's more of a Tex-Mex invention. Okay, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we were there a couple of years... Uh, no, a couple of years ago. Uh, last year for a, our friend's, uh, Megan's... Megan Sarah's birthday party, I think. Yeah, who, who, you're, uh, who you're trying to give the T-bone. Except that you gave it to your uncle. <laughs> so I gave it to my uncle. Yeah. I'll buy your stuff. <laughs> so... Uh, um, you know, when I was there the first time, uh, I ordered uh, street tacos, which, by the way, are fantastic, delicious. If you never had street style tacos, definitely recommend getting them up. Hey, you heard it here first, people. Tacos are good. Nick says so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, a couple of our friends ordered burritos, and mm. I, you know, obviously, you know, our first time at this restaurant, we didn't think anything of it until the burritos arrived, and oh my god, this they were ginormous, weren't they? Uh, they were massive, and I, I just noticed that they have uh, a secondary item uh, called the the Big Fiesta Burrito, and you can tell that it's larger because it's 50% more expensive. So, Nick, I think you better go there. Well, I want to take a look at the whole list. Uh, ooh, carne asada, I, you never go wrong with that. Mm. Uh, uh, fajitas, ooh, I don't know. Um, there's, I think I one find out the California burrito. It sounds uh, really good. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Yeah, so we'll, we'll update that after I kick Nick's ass in this eating contest. Because e- e- even though I'm, well, I'm a little, I'm a little bit smaller. Although, yeah, I'm, I'm not skinny by any means. I can put it away. I, you're going down. You're going down to Chinatown. 
I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best here. Fiesta Cancun, Grill and Bar in Egan. Give them some free love. Um, now, I, I want to uh, ask, let, let's do the news. You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. Can you... George Bush doesn't care about black people. I ain't got time to believe. You can't handle the truth. The news with Uncle Nick. All right, Nick, what's going on in the world today? All right, um, the news I could hear last week, uh, Fox News has uh, fired or let go of uh, Bill O'Reilly after a ton of sexual harassment lawsuits that have occurred over the past few years that have been, um, you know, now leaked that, you know, he's been paying it, you know, settling out of court, uh, I think up to the tune of 12 to $13 million. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I don't watch Fox News, so I don't feel too comfortable talking too much about this, but uh, Bill O'Reilly has been a staple of the Fox News channel uh, since uh, looks like he was ninety six. Oh, I he's mean, been their their biggest draw, and it, I feel like if you get one allegation or one settlement, even, and then that could be an aberration. But when you got a bunch of, of women coming out out of the the woodwork, uh, that's a trend. It's like with Bill Cosby. There's one accuser. You could be like, "Oh, well, yeah, you know, she's just looking for a paycheck." But when you got thirty of them, it's like, "Oh, I, I, I'm starting to sense a pattern here." Um, I haven't found out any news about. Um, is there going to be any? I mean, will there be any criminal lawsuits or all these all these settlements are kind of like, "Oh, no, we're make it go." Yeah, away. there won't be any criminal. That's, uh, I, I, there, there should be. You know, if it's a harassment, I mean, there sh- there should be some type of charge about this, and. Um, I was I was listening to someone online saying that um you know with O'Reilly, with O'Reilly being gone he's going to be uh, uh, Tucker Carlson is going to fill in for him so oh wow so N- be, uh, nice for a Carlson you moved on up to the east side finally got a piece of the pie uh, yeah O'Reilly was making twenty to twenty four million a year yeah wow that that's is... a nice little chunk of change uh I, I'm not too familiar with the show is it uh. Is it a show that's on daily or weekly? Daily. Okay, so... Or what well, was. <laughs> uh, and, and, yeah, it's just like your normal hour-long news program. He goes through a spiel and has guests on, and it's like, no, no, no. But uh, he, he's not done. Like, he, he'll catch on somewhere. But I always remember Bill O'Reilly for when he's back on Inside Edition, for some reason, this. And that is it for us today. Okay, I don't know what... Whatever it is, it's not right on a teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. No, there it is. We are going to do Sting, yeah. Okay, but... Okay. Th- now, I can't read it. There's no, there's no words on it. Okay. Any? Sure. There's yeah. no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? It's, it's Sting is going to do... It's a video. Sting video. What is for credits? I don't know what that means to play out. What does that mean? This is his first time doing a new stuff. To end the show? Yeah. Yeah. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it. Okay. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. <laughs> I, I can't do it. Okay. We'll he do it live. Watch. Okay. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! <laughs> do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! In <laughs> five, four, three. That's tomorrow and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. I wonder what Sting's song was. Starting on a brand new day. I really hope that's what it was. <laughs> God, what, how how long ago was that night? Was that early nineties? Uh, ah, ninety something. Yeah, it's um, it, it I I I feel like especially TV people, there's a, always a little screw loose. I mean, we saw Chris Brand uh, videos of him freaking out as well. Uh, high stress environment, ego, big paychecks, demeaning uh, the young uh, producers or production assistant. I don't know, but yeah, o- O'Reilly, he was definitely Fox's cash cow, and I, I think there was a what was a culture of where it, you know being okay that the big the big wigs, uh, most of males, can treat women just as 
objects and you see that permeated with you know Gretchen Carlson leaving and then uh, I forget the name of the president eventually had to step down uh, but yeah it's yeah, huge shocker that the conservative news station has the and the old, good old boys club. Yeah, crazy. Uh, I mean, God, do you think this? Uh, I mean, this definitely hurts Fox News. Uh, me, but I don't know. I don't see them going away anytime soon. Obviously, with the new election, new. Um, well, I, yeah, they can't go away because then it, <laughs> it would all be one sided in the media. Unless you know, Breitbart comes in and has their own news channel. <sighs> I don't know. Bre- Breitbart is basically InfoWars. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's next? Uh, he will be missed. RIP. Oh, wait, no, he's not dead. Now he'll be back. All right. What's next? Uh, he might be dead. <laughs> next, uh, a nice local uh, news sta- uh, story I found from Care 11. Uh, the Growler launches a Minnesota booze map. Yeah. Um, mm. uh, there's, there's no joke about this. A uh, local news uh, website called GrowlerMag.com. If you're interested, you know, you know, Andy, you like to drink. Uh, you like to go out every once in a while. I like to drink. I don't like going out. Okay, well then, that <laughs> ruins the segment now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this website here, and uh, actually, wait before I inter- uh, before I interrupt you by interrupting you. Uh, actually, I don't drink alone, so I'm not. Uh, who, who's the guy? I drink alone. Yeah, with nobody else. You know, I drink alone. Oh, I prefer to be by, by myself. myself. It's uh, I choose that right. Bad to the bone guy. Oh, George the Thorgood. Yeah, uh, I don't drink alone. Like uh, it's all, it's a very social thing for me. And like, yeah, maybe after a, a day yards work, I'll, I'll I'll crack a beer. But it's not. You know how a lot of people just like sit and watch TV and then have a couple of Jackson Cokes. Mm-hmm. I, 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 that's not in me. Like I I can honestly go months without drinking and then. You know, ha- have a couple when we get together at a barbecue or something, and like that's my thing. It's weird. Sorry, God, growl it. It's, it's not weird at all. It's um, a lot of people are social drinkers. I'm antisocial, and I, I I drink at the bar alone. <laughs> but enough about my drinking problems. Uh, anyway, uh, K11 announced announced that the Growler magazine has launched uh, an interactive map for Minnesota. So if you are interested in looking for a place to get. Uh, to get a drink, um, and I'm not saying like bars really. I'm I'm talking more like the breweries, mm-hmm. the distilleries, wineries. Oh, there's even cideries. Yeah, believe it or not, I did not believe that was the cideries. <laughs> anyway, um, this kind of works like Google Maps. If you uh, go to their website, uh, uh, growlermag.com/land-10,000-drinks/slash, mm. um, you get a map of Minnesota, and let's say you're in. Anoka, you can zoom in uh, either on your phone or I'm, I'm doing it on, on my laptop right now. It can pull up a list of all the local breweries. Any, um, if you're looking for a beer place, you know, go to breweries, looking for like spirits, uh, drinks, anything. You can uh, zoom in on cities and you can find, uh, you can find names. You can, it, it can take you to the Nobody website itself. Is. Uh, info, you know, it can tell you if there's food or not. I mean, it's a pretty useful thing, uh, pretty fun if you like to, uh, especially in our state, uh, especially in the Twin Cities, has become a booming place for um, craft breweries. The <laughs> do, do you think we, we've we reached the saturation point with breweries? Because um, there has to be at least, at least 50 breweries in the Twin Cities area. Yeah, I, I think I think we're peaking out where um, where like a lot of people see a couple of breweries here and there, you know, especially like in Northeast, and they're like, "Oh man, man, this stuff's fantastic! I bet we can start." One. And you know, it's not too difficult to uh, start your own business. You know, mm-hmm. start start a brewery. You know, even just is need a warehouse that can, and uh, you know, a brewmaster, someone who knows how to brew a couple of beers, and you know, they think they can just start it. You know. But and sadly, you know, we live in a society where a lot of people want to drink. Well, get wasted. Sadly, uh, well, you know what I mean? the because that used to be the dream of everyone like twenty years ago. It's like, oh man, I hate my job. I just want to open up a bar, and all my friends can come there and drink, and it'll be good. And now it, it's morphed into uh, the brewery. It's like, oh man, I want to start my own tap 
tap room and with youtube i can learn how to brew beer uh, etc i can go take an apprenticeship it's really fun and i i feel like um with beer and breweries it, it's a bit like music where there's obviously beer snobs and the ones like oh well my new favorite uh brewery is um Mouse in the Closet Brewery. You've never heard of it, but you know, it's really good. Nice little small place up in Arden Hills. And it's sort of like music in the fact that, oh, uh, well, we just heard uh, tra- trash, trash Bin Heroes. Yeah, they're, they're really good. You've never heard of them, but they're really small local indie band, and we love them, man. They're really good. You've never heard of them because I'm better than you. And I, I feel like there are definitely beer snobs in the world, just like there's wine snobs, but... Uh, from my experience in all, all the breweries and tap rooms is that uh, meeting a couple of the head brewers as well, like you don't get that vibe. Like they just want to make good beer, they're putting out good product, have community. And yeah, I mean, it, it, it's cool, but also just economically, not every single one of these can be making money. Yeah. Um, I like to take a screenshot now of like the twin cities. See all the ones that are here now in 2017 and you know, let's give it a year. Let's give it two years. See if um, if there's just as many or if there's even more. But yeah, I'm kind of wanting the financial aspect. Also, we should start a game. Uh, it should be: um, Is this the name of a brewery or is it the name of a indie band? <laughs> Burning oh, Brothers. That's a great idea. Black Stack. Lake Monster. <laughs> uh, in oh, yeah, I'm in the inside. Certainly, yeah, of course. <laughs> That'd be a fun thing. Um, I am looking at the Twin Cities map. Twin Cities is highly, highly full. But um, as I said, this uh, this is for a state of Minnesota. So if you're doing a road trip up north, if you're going south to see family, if there's something in particular, you know, if you if you want that craft brew brewery taste, I mean, you can uh, check out this map and uh, you know, plan maybe a little trip about it. Uh, yeah, all over the state there's. Uh, you know, not too many cities are you know isolated. Um, mm-hmm. Otana, there's nothing, nothing really in Otana. Winsdom in southwestern Minnesota, but you know uh, Alexandria, you can get stuff down in. Uh, and uh, I was hanging out with our, our mutual friend Alex from college here um, a couple weeks ago, and we, we were going through our top five, top ten uh, favorite breweries, and we, we didn't have any crossover. Like the ten were completely different. And yeah, you know, that that's the interesting he, thing here in the Twin Cities is that there's so many that you can have a top ten list that don't even cross over. Uh, I don't know. I don't know too much about state laws and stuff, but I mean, is there a way you can? Because can we look up financial documents to see how much, how profitable? Um, well, if they're publicly traded, except uh, all, all these aren't. Like even Surly um, and Summer are privately owned. Okay, so, okay, so we can't see yeah. because I yeah because from a business perspective, I am wondering. If they're financially well off, I mean, I think a lot of breweries aren't, you know, too fully, you know, like staffed. It's not like staffs of like well, fifty or hundred. The the tap room is that can almost be a lost leader where it's just more about marketing and promoting and getting some people in to try. Uh, I think a lot of these places do make their money by through distribution. You know, getting them in liquor stores, getting it um, uh, out Local. there, and widening their product into actual stores. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your favorite tap room? Favorite tap room? Uh, you know, I'm not much of a, a brewery crafts beer guy. I'm a light beer drinker. Mm-hmm. Um, the other ones I've been to uh, that's memorable is uh, Surly and uh, Insight Brewery. Yep. Um, uh, they both have a, a light size on, or they did when I when I went there, which I liked. Um, you know, sweeter, kind of citrusy. Mm-hmm. Um, those are fantastic. Uh, uh, the Surly one, the new one that's in uh, in uh, Minneapolis uh, off of like 280, is a huge place. They have and they serve great food there. I definitely recommend going to Surly if you can get in. If you can get in, yeah. yes, yes, it does get uh, pretty busy. It, it does uh, get pretty busy there, but, but for a good reason because they make a great product. I, of indeed. course, uh, yeah, love indeed. Oh, yeah, and also, if you're down in the South Metro, uh, there's a place called Angry Inch down in Lakeville that's uh, really high quality as well. They have a sub, they had a Samoa. Kisses, I believe it is. It tastes like the Girl Scout cookie. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, what's next? All right, our last story is a uh, remembrance story here. 
it has been 13 years since the death of Pat Tillman, um, former NFL um, NFL football player who, uh, after 9-11, um, after having a, a great successful career with the uh, Arizona Cardinals, decided to decided to leave it all and uh, join the Army because he wanted to serve his uh, nation. And mm. uh, tragically, um, he was killed and sadly by... Um, was later found out to be friendly fire. Yeah, after nine eleven, he and his brother joined up with the Army Rangers, and uh, yeah, he was killed in a friendly fire incident. I feel like uh, the government tried to cover it up a little bit, but that's sort of immaterial. And w- what Tillman did is that he, he was still in the prime of his playing career, is one of the uh, better safeties in the league, and walked away from a lucrative contract to actually serve his country and do something, putting his <laughs> on the table, and. He is a very inspirational figure, and it's crazy that it's been 13 years, uh, mainly because he's a beacon of what uh, people should actually do, as opposed to just putting out hashtags or going to a march and getting your picture on Instagram. Actually, if you believe strongly your convictions, actually do something about it. And that's exactly what Pat, Pil- Pat Tillman did. Uh, he, paid the, the, he made the ultimate sacrifice for standing up and actually walking the walk in what he believed in instead of just talking the talk. And, yeah, we need more Pat Tillmans in the world and fewer hashtags. I'm trying to look up his personal life. Uh, It doesn't look like he was married uh, at the time of his death. I don't think he has any children that he left behind. Yeah, he's still basically a deity down in Arizona playing with the Cardinals, and he also went to Arizona State. And just just a, a, a badass MF all the way around. Uh, Pat Tillman's the man. It it was tragic to uh, hear him go. I mean, NFL was talking about it for a long time, and so, yeah, it's been yeah because uh, September 11 was God, is it uh, 16 years ago? Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, uh, he passed away in 2004, and yeah, thir- that's 13 years, uh, folks. Kind of a long and uh, heartbreaking thing, but obviously uh, there are statues uh, that commemorate him. I believe Arizona, I think the Cardinals open had a statue mm-hmm. of him at the stadium. So, I mean, he'll never be forgotten. And I think that's uh, a lot to learn, a uh, lot to get out of this uh, story. And if you believe strongly in something, you know, back it up. Actually put your nuts on the table and do something about it, like just like Pat Tillman did. So if you're sad about refugee crisis in Syria or across the world instead of just going on a, a 500 word Facebook rant about it how about how about you join up some of these uh international aid groups you know, how how about you put your life on hold go over there volunteer and do some good shit for a change instead of just trying to put out like oh we need to do something about this send on twitter and then pat yourself on the back and think that you're a good person no no we we need more pat tillman in the world i agree I yeah, agree. yeah. That's that's all I have. <laughs> oh, all right. That yeah, uh, that's the news. Eventually, the news with Uncle Nick. From the entire Channel Four news team, I'm Veronica Corningstone, and I'm Ron Burgundy. Go f- yourself, San Diego. Now, Nick, are you willing to put something up in something that your conviction, something you believe? If you can't finish your burrito, what will you give me? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea where yeah, you were going to go yeah, with that. Just uh, a, a bet with no upside, essentially. A bet with no upside? What will I give you? What, what, what would you like from me? No, you can't turn around. I, I asked first. <sighs> I will give you. Are you gonna get appetizer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start with bread. Yes, please. I'm gonna load up with bread first. All right, we'll, we'll figure out the bet, and it'll be good to go. Also, something that's good to go is getting around town to lift a bullshow dot co slash lift. And hey, uh, Nick and I probably shouldn't be driving after this burrito challenge because you can get drunk off of food. You really can. Hmm. Yeah. So we're going to get back here with Lyft. Bullshow.co slash Lyft. 15 bucks off your first couple of rides. That's what we're doing for you, baby. Service in the entire Twin Cities metro area. Oh, so if you're going on the Growler tour, tour, 
use Lyft to get around. Bullshow.co slash Lyft, L-Y-F-T. Download the app today. Uh, shows available on iTunes, Stitcher, Aha Radio, and uh, check out our YouTube. We got some good stuff going on there. And, ooh, also Facebook. We, we have a contest, as it were. Uh, we're giving away a $100 Blue Door Pub gift card. As soon as we get over a thousand likes on our Facebook page, so head on over there, facebook.com slash bull show to figure out all the instructions and get your ass up in there. And yeah, if you enjoy the show, tell a friend, spread the word. Word of mouth is how we're getting out there and growing at to the Jerome Homie Army. Do it up. And next producer, Allie Jerome Sorensen for making us not sound so stupid today. But for Nick, I'm Andy Singh and Young. Sayonara and bye bye. We'll talk to you tomorrow. listening to Bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome.